Hello Legacy students, today we're going to look at imaginary and complex numbers. What you're going to want to have on you, your own notes, pen or pencil, and then also a calculator. Your learning objective, I can work with imaginary and complex numbers. So once upon a time, a man sat down to solve a quadratic equation. Well, he subtracted 10 from both sides, like you did, would do. And he did x squared equals the square root of negative 10, and then he square root of both sides. Well, he tried that, and that didn't work. And he didn't like what he saw. There was no solution. And he knew there were supposed to be two solutions. So what can you do? So what Rene Descartes did is he decided that even though his calculator didn't understand negative square roots, he developed a plan. He invented a new sort of number system that gives new types of numbers. And so the imaginary number system was born. So here's what imaginary numbers are. i equals the square root of negative 1. So i is for imaginary. So basically, if you have a negative 1 under a square root, you can translate that to i. So i squared then is technically negative 1. Now, how do you use i to rewrite square roots? So if I have the square root of negative 25, I can rewrite this as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25, right? Because negative 1 times 25 gives me negative 25. Well, the square root of negative 1, well, that's just i, right? Because we learned that before here. 25, the square root of 25 is just 5. So I can rewrite this as 5i. Now it's customary to put the number before your i just so you see it kind of like we do at 5x. So we'll do it as 5i as well. What about the square root of negative 6? Well, same thing. We need to take out a negative 1, multiply that by a square root of 6. Well, square root of negative 1, well, that's just i. And then square root of 6 doesn't simplify down at all. So I can just leave that as i square roots of 6. Let's try it again. So I got the square root of 40. So let's break that down. I've got negative 1 and the square root of 40. Now, square root of 40, I think that guy can come down. Which I think a 4 and a 10 can go in there, right? Well, square root of 4, well, we know that to be 2. So, and this is i right here. So I'll rewrite this. I have 2i and then square root of 10. So 2 times i times the square root of 10 is equal to the square root of negative 40. Let's try it again. So 5 square roots of negative 48. So the very first thing I know is I'm going to take out an i, right, to get rid of that square root. Like that. Now 48. Uh, what numbers can go into 48? 16, I think, can. So 16 and 3. Uh, square root of 16, well, that's 4. So I can rewrite this as 5i times 4 square roots of 3. Let's simplify this down even further, because this is multiplied. So 5 times 4, well, that's just 20. So I have 20i square roots of 3. Same thing. Let's try this. Um, just like before, we can break that into two little square roots, top and bottom. Um, let's get rid of that i in the inside on the top there. So I'll get i square roots of 10, square root of 3. Can't leave it as a square root of 3. Remember, got to rationalize our denominator. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3 on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to get i square roots of 30 all over square root of 9, which is 3. And that's my final answer for that particular problem. Because the square root of 30, 4 doesn't go in, 16, 25, none of the perfect squares go underneath it. So I can just leave it as that. Now, how do you simplify complex numbers? You're going to want to write it as part real, part imaginary. So you're going to want to write the number first and then the part with the i second. So this one, I have i times quantity 3 plus i. So basically what you want to do is distribute that i in. So I'll get 3i here 
plus i times i, which is i squared. Don't stop. Don't wait, though. Wait, wait, wait. i squared. i squared. That is... Well, technically, isn't this the square root of negative 1 squared? Right? Because i is the square root of negative 1. Well, squared, square root, cancel out. So I'm left with 3i plus a negative 1. Which, if I want to write the real part first, I'm going to write negative 1, right? So I'm going to get negative 1 plus 3i for my answer for this particular one. Whenever you see an i squared, you're always going to want to rewrite that. Now, this one, I have 3 plus 2i plus 4 minus 6i. So basically, we're going to combine like terms. 3 and 4. 3 plus 4, well, that's just 7. 2i and negative 6i, well, that's negative 4i. I'm done with that problem. I combined my like terms that are with each other. So the i guys went together and the real part went together. Let's further, let's do some distributing on this one. So I have 3i times 4, so that's 12i. Little mess up right there. Um, 3i times negative 5i is going to give me negative 15i squared, because I had two i's, right? Um, what else can I multiply by? 6 times 4, that's a positive 24. And 6 times negative 5i is negative 30i. Now, let's combine some like terms. So I got 12i and negative 30i. Well, I know that's negative 18i, right? 15i squared plus 24. Well, i squared, that's the same as negative 1. So technically, I have negative 15 times negative 1 right here. So basically, I'm going to get a positive 15. So I'll have negative 18i plus 15 plus 24. So if I write this as the real part, or the numbers together first, and then the i part, so 15 plus 24, that is 39. And I'm going to put the i part second here. Done with that particular problem. So basically, watch out, distribute to everybody, multiply everybody out. i squared is the same as negative 1. And then combine your like terms. And that's the end of this video. See you later, Sabers!